to pick up traction in uh, junk removal, right? How long does it take? Uh, okay, so that's a good question. Good question. And I think a lot of people think that this business is an easy business to get into and it's just going to take off immediately, right? I think a lot of people think that it's just one of those things where eventually I just put a, you know, I get a truck, I get my brand out there and man, the calls are just going to be coming in, right? I think the, the <laughs> And this is this is as old as it can get. Any any industry, any industry. So I want you to think about this. And I know there's a lot of YouTubers out there, and I know there's a lot of people that decided to do these videos after they saw someone else's videos to do it. And I wonder who that was. But I think the misconception that you get in this business, and you're just gonna do really really good in this business is such an illusion, right? It's such an illusion to so many people. It's like, oh, I'm going to make money. I'm going to make money doing this just because I saw this guy from Dallas, you know, and this guy from Dallas, he, he's going to, he showed me the way. Man, I'm going to rake in the dough, right? Good morning, Alex. Can you hear me okay, brother? And it's this misunderstanding that all these people have Uh that this is an easy business and you're going to get in this business and just be successful. What's up, Indio? ¿Qué pasó, amigo? Uh, and today, um, a side note, I'm going to unleash my, uh, <clears throat> my website and show you how I built this website, okay? Um, the eviction process website. You're going to love this, man. You're going to love this. You're going to go, oh, shit, that's how he did it. It's pretty cool. So we're getting back to this. Kid. The question is, how long, I mean, does it take for your business to gain traction? Clinton Hill, what's up, man? Thank you. Thank you, Clinton. Appreciate that. I'm the dog. Unleash the beast. I viene, I viene, bro. I viene. I viene, dude. Chill. Calm. You do too much. You do too much. Um, and I think people don't put in the work that they're supposed to. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to get as much as your business gives you as, as much as you put into that business. Don't sit here on these on these message boards and asking me and and telling me, uh, hey, man, I'm not getting any business. Well, what are you doing right now? Well, you know, I'm just sitting around waiting. Exactly. You're just sitting around. So yesterday I did a video, right? <clears throat> yesterday I did a video about how this guy um, just people will do ads all day and they'll do it for two to three years, find out they're not making any money. And then during this whole time, they weren't doing any organic traffic. They weren't trying anything. Well, anyway, just a coincidence that someone called me off of that video. So yesterday I got into this $60 one hour talk. I charged 60 bucks. You can believe that? Yeah. I'm junk pro squad out of Raleigh, North Carolina, 100% organic. You know what this means? Organic. I mean, they're W's, but if W standard for O, it'd be organic. Okay, never mind. Um, and I'm telling you, this guy, I'm talking to this dude, and I'm telling him, bro, so you've been doing this for two and a half, he's been doing this for two and a half years, and he says he never, he never once did it organic. So I asked him, I said, so let me look at your Facebook page. He sent me to his Facebook page. He hasn't posted in a long time. Um, it's been like six months, three months, something like this. This is a different story. This is a different guy. And good morning, Robert, my boy, Rob, Rob. And, um, and he, he had him posted like six months. I think it was six months. And then he, I asked him, I said, well, what's your Instagram? He doesn't have an Instagram. He doesn't care. He just doesn't have an Instagram. I said, well, how about your TikTok? No. How about your, uh, you know, shit, anything else? You got a YouTube? No. Okay, you don't have a TikTok. You don't have a, you have a Facebook. You you don't have a TikTok. You don't have a LinkedIn account. You have a TikTok, Twitter. You don't have Instagram. You don't have anything else, just a Facebook. 
And what this guy did was put all his marbles into, and this is the same video I posted yesterday. This is the same video. As a matter of fact, he called me off the video. He goes, I just saw your video and that's me. And I said, well, dude, I do these videos so people can call me so we can interact and stuff, okay? And I'm telling you, um, it was just amazing what he's actually done nothing. And I told him, sir, you're going to, I, you know, I forgot his name. I said, um, you're going to put, you're going to get exactly what you put into this business. You're going to get out of this business, man, which is nothing, dude. So the question on Facebook group was, how long does it take for traction to gain in your business? Like your junk removal, but you start your business on Monday, January the 1st. How long does traction really take? It depends on a few things, okay? Well, first off is how hard are you going to work on this? How hard are you going to work on this, okay? Second thing is how often are you going to post on social media sites? And how strong is your website to do this? So all these three things, you know, how hard are you going to work is the most one, okay? It's just important that you press every day, day to day to work. And I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you something. I have... It is 9.36. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. I lost my other ear thing, man. I just went between my seat. Oh, here it is. Um, it is 9.26 right now, okay? 9.20, 9.36. I'm sorry. 9.36. And I'm in my house. I'm at my house. My house is right here. <laughs> I'm parked outside. I'm in no hurry. I have four jobs. Four jobs. Two of them are right down the street from me. Uh, one of them's in Dallas in the late afternoon and the other one's a fridge in Arlington. So they're all out there, but I'm sitting at home doing this video because I'm in no rush. I'm taking my time. And I remember seeing a video about this guy's being stressed, couldn't pay his bill, blah, 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 yada, yada, some bullshit. You know, I did a big video about it. Um, <laughs> man, I'm not, dude, I am not stressed about this job at all, dude. I guess, is it tough out there today? Yes. Do I average about nine jobs today? Yes, I do average about nine jobs and I'm not getting them right now. So I'm doing two, three jobs a day or four jobs. Like today I have four, right? Um, uh, but every day is a challenge every day. Wait, how many do I got today? No, I got four. I got four jobs today. Yeah. Nicholas Haley says junk removal starter kit, good trucks. You recommend to start his junk removal and is, what is, are you asking me, Nicholas, what is a good truck to start a junk removal business with? Okay. Uh, rephrase that question if you don't mind. So I, I do want to say something. I do want to say something is the traction takes a t a, some time. It takes time. It could take six months to a year for it to really take off, but depending on how you're pressing it. Now me, I would do it in six months. I can make a website rank in about six months just because of the brand junk guys. It's a lot easier. Um, my social media presence makes this business a lot easier for me. Uh, and I know for someone that's, uh, you know, not doing social media so much and doesn't have a YouTube channel, it's a lot tougher. You know what I mean? But this guy yesterday I was talking to, it was just incredible just to hear him out and just to hear his excuses telling me this is why uh, he can't do it. I don't have the time for it. I never thought about it. I was making money in, in junk removal and because he was running ads, he was running cook, he was running paid ads and paid leads. Okay. And he never once thought while he's paying for these leads and these ads, he never once thought to start doing organic traffic on the side. I'm, I'm going to tell you something, what's going on right now. I'm looking at my roof of my house right here, right? And when I'm editing videos, and I just want to make myself clear. When I'm editing videos, I always hear these squirrels in my attic. There's these fucking squirrels in my attic all the time. And I just saw the squirrel come down the side of my house on the roof and sneak into my house. And that's how he's getting in. That son of a bitch. Anyway, uh, Nicholas asked the question, what's a good truck to start with junk removal? And should I get a trailer or should I, the truck be good enough for most of you? You know what? Right now, brother, right now, I think uh, you, you, you asked a great question. You asked if I, you should get a truck. So I always tell everybody to get a big truck, get a bigger truck. And I'm going to tell you why. If you're thinking of this business to do on the weekends, do your F-150. Just keep your F-150. If you're thinking of doing this on the side, just do your F-150. Now, if you're thinking of growing this business where you want to be 
the king of your city, if you want to grow this business and expand it and eventually have two trucks or whatever, get a big, big, big truck, okay? No, they're not rats. They're squirrels. Orson, that's you, little shit. Um, and the thing about it, I, I always tell people, and I know Orson, like Orson, this is a great question because Orson asked me this question yesterday. He said, Ricardo, I'm thinking of getting an F-150 to pull my, my trailer. And I'm like thinking, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's not about getting four-wheel drive either, Orson. It's about getting a bigger truck. He needs to get a big truck, like an F-350, an F-450. If you have a big truck, you don't have to scale up later on down the road. In, four, in two years, you won't think about, you know, because Orson has a Frontier. It's a V6, 370 horsepower, uh, what do you call it? Uh and look at Anthony Lopez. Even Anthony Lopez knows this. He said, I blew out my transmission, my F-150. See, the thing about it, if we keep on driving Orson's V6 truck everywhere to do these things, he's going to have trouble with his transmission. Not now. Not right now, Orson. But I guarantee you, you will have trouble with your truck sooner or later. Um, if you get a big truck, you don't have to worry about that for a long, long time. A long time. Because these trucks are built. For that, these trucks are designed and built especially to pull. Their transmissions are designed, their specifications, and I will tell you this. To who asked me that question, uh, Nicholas, I will tell you this: you can do these jobs with just a truck, a long bed. Get a big truck, a long bed. Okay, if you're planning to grow this business big time, eventually you will get yourself a truck. But right now. Just use your truck, okay? Do your clean outs. If you got to do two trip, two trip trips until you realize what you're doing, okay? Now, again, the question was, what kind of truck do you use and how do I gain traction? Well, you gain traction by working hard, but you have to also use your website. You have to use your social media to make it work or it's just not going to work at all, at all. Oh, my receding hairline's bad, man. I never thought my hair grows like crazy too. What the fuck? Um... And I told Orson yesterday, okay, and then now we're going to go somewhere else, okay? I hope that answers your question, okay? Oh, wait a minute. Jose Cineros has it. Do you think it's faster to get commercial customers when you have a website or you can get having a good presence on Google? No, oh, well, Ho Jose, and uh, hopefully I answer this question right. Let me, let me look at it. Do you think it's faster to get commercial customers when you have a website? Or can you say, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. My commercial customers are just a tidbit of my business, okay? I just want to tell you that. My commercial customers are not a huge part of my business. They are uh, they are a part of my business, but they're, I don't think they're a big part. I think they're about 25 to 30% of my business, you know? My customers are about 70%. My, my normal customers are about 70%, okay? Um, I rely on day-to-day -day people calling me. Like today, I have two commercial and then I have two residential. And usually I'll have one commercial maybe four times a week, okay? And then the rest are all, all normal customers picking up single items. But I, here's a misconception. Here's a misconception that I think a lot of people have of me. A lot of people think I'm a junk removal company. I'm not, okay? I am not a junk removal company. I'm a eviction and hoarder company because that's my primary thing that i've been doing a lot lately you know hoarding and, and commercial jobs that's like my number one thing i do and this misconception that i'm a junk removals yeah maybe i started as one but lately man i've been just doing commercial commercial jobs after commercial jobs i'm moving my phone real fast and that's where i'm, I'm really really been stepping up my game doing this is commercial I just, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. It's hoarding and uh, evictions. I've been doing a lot of hoardings and a lot of evictions lately, and that's where I really excelled. Okay, I, I hope I, I said that right because I, I was talking about and then uttered my words and said something else. Uh, definitely. Thank you. Okay, India the holler says first one was Dodge 15, blew it out. Have a I have a 2007 Shields Rada 25, no issues except diesel expensive. Diesel is expensive, Indio. It is expensive right now. 2,500 is not bad. It's not bad. Jose Cisnero says, that good thing with Kirsch Marshall is, is that a, is it, yeah, I think it is. I mean, I think you're absolutely right about that. Oh, man, I just got a customer on the phone. Oh, man, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, I'm going to do this. I'm going to call them. 
I talked to my customer for 272 8792. Okay, so I'm gonna, here. I'm gonna put them on speaker on this phone right here. Here we go. Let's see what they say. Hi, I'm speaking with Brady. Who? No, no. Fucking fucking fakers, man. Fucking fakers. Um, let's see. The good thing is, com yeah, commercial customers uh, are repeat customers. They are co repeat customers. The thing about commercial customers, man, they don't care, man. Once you once you overprice them or overcharge them, they just go to the next junk removal company. That's the one thing that really scares me about commercial customers. And I have a good one with Colonial. I built that relationship with them. So they're not going anywhere and I'm not going anywhere. You know what I mean? They use me and I use them. You know what I mean? Junk Pro Squad says, start with whatever vehicle you have. Hey, that's a good one. And that's true. Junk Pro Squad ain't stupid. He, whatever you have, just start with it. And it's true. It's true. Jose Sonoros, are the evictions from the cities that you work with or with banks? Okay, so I do work with uh, everybody, Jose. So it's not just with the cities or or um, with the banks, okay? I work with anybody. I work Normally, I will tell you this, normally, Jose, and it's going to be a surprise. I work with the homeowner. Can you believe that? It's that property owner, but he owns a home and he was renting it out to some people and they decided to stay longer and he evicts them. That's who I really work with. So on a ratio, uh, a scale of 100%, let's say 100%, the homeowner is about 60%. 20% will be banks and another 20% will be investments, investment, investors, people that are flipping and stuff like that, like commercial and stuff like that. That will be about the other 20%. Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess it's 60, yeah, 60% 60 customers, normal people, normal people like me and you, 20% banks, investors with banks. And the other 20 will be the city. The city, I guess, will be that. You know, and I'm just trying to think of how it works works with me. Okay, brother? So don't don't put me down for that, okay? But if you got another question to that question, answer that. Ask me that question, okay? Mr. Goya, 777, how much went towards the start up of the business? Rough estimate, not a truck, but legal stuff. But not a truck, but legal stuff. Oh, well, you're going to hate this, Mr. Goya, 777. 777, yeah. And that's, by the way, that's the start of my phone number, 214-777. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Um, so he asked a good question. He asked, uh, how much did I start up on my business and not trucks, just legalities and stuff like that? Hmm. I went, I remember when I first started my business 16 years ago, I went to downtown to this courthouse and I spent $14 to get my DBA. And then... Um, yeah, that was it, man. 14 bucks. <laughs> it does it. There's no, I didn't get insurance. I didn't have insurance for like six or seven years, dude, on my business. I didn't need it. The only reason I got insurance is because um, I see my business as being kind of high profile being on YouTube. So that's the only reason I got, I did not get business. That business insurance is so fake. It is so, so fake. Don't fall for that shit, man. That shit's so fake. Mm. Mm. No. I did. I will tell you this, Mr. Goya. I'll expand that question. In Texas, the laws are totally different than California. Totally different. Totally. First of all, there's not a permit for doing junk removal. Second of all, if you want to start a junk removal business, you ask for a tax permit and they give it to you like you're going to 7-Eleven to get a Slurpee. Um, and then with that say, saying that, you have to have a vehicle and a trailer. My dad let me borrow, let me have, I'm sorry, my dad did not let me borrow. My dad gave me, he saw promise in me and he gave me a Dodge 3500 Econoline van, which is absolutely the best vehicle I've ever owned. Oh man, I, I hauled so much shit in that vehicle. I hauled so much shit. I would have that vehicle weighed with weight inside of it. And then I would take, I would be pulling four tons, uh, two tons in the back. I would have two tons inside of it and two tons in the back. These Econoline vans have huge suspension on them, right? Huge suspension. And you can weigh them down with just about what I put in this F550. This F550 is so effing strong. 
I'm going to tell you, this F-550 is like over. And this is something that Orson was saying. Orson said, I don't need an F-550, but you might want to get an F-550 sooner, sooner or later down the line. You might want to, Orson. You might want to. You know what I mean? But yeah, there's a, a lot of challenges in uh, in just growing this business. So GPTX Junk Rule says, an LLC is different costs in every state. In Texas, it's around 300 register. Insurance is pretty cheap over here at 30, 40 a month. But you really don't need it unless you're doing a lot of commercial. Yeah, and you don't need um, liability insurance. Like when you go into someone's house and you're going to damage something, you got to be a, a total, total idiot to damage something. I mean, look at me and Orson. We worked yesterday at a lady's house, right? We were in... Um, where were we in yesterday, Orson? I forgot where we were. What city were we in? Removing that piano. And um, we were in this house yesterday, and the house, the backyard, she had a, like a $100,000 pool in the backyard, a beautiful pool, beautiful outside. And then in the inside, the walls were kind of jacked up. The house was kind of messy on the end. Beautiful house, beautiful house, great neighborhood. As a matter of fact, the dogs ran out. We got in trouble for that. Um, but we were kind of careful on the way out, we were really careful. Cor Orson gets mad at me. He gets mad at me because I moved so fast coming out of the houses with stuff. And, and I was pulling the car and he was like, oh, with the piano and shit. And he was having a his fit. But if you're clumsy and you're a fucking wreck and don't know what you're doing, then maybe you need to get insurance. I didn't have insurance for a long, 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 long time. Okay. I spent $14, used my dad's van. Use my dad's insurance. I think my dad was paying for it at the time. But I remember when I had to pay for the insurance, it was like mesquite. Mesquite? What a fucking mesquite, Orson. Get out of here. Um, I could tell you this, but um, McKinney, McKinney, Orson, not mesquite. We were in McKinney yesterday removing this piano. And I could just tell you this, that it was... Insurance, when my dad made me pay insurance, it was like 250 bucks for insurance, bro. It was crazy. I was like, what, 250 bucks back in the day? Shit. And my dad had like farmer's insurance or some shit like he owned a farm or whatever. Anyway, uh, let's go to the next one. So Jose Consenero says, question for the room. Have you guys thought of following 1-800-JUNK-TRUCK to customer's house to see if they give a price estimate and don't get it when you get there after? Get okay, so I will tell you, um, that's a great question, Jose. I do have a history um, with that question, so I'm going to tell you what we did. Uh, or uh, Carson, who is JunkGuysNashville.com, I want to give him his props there. He hired 1-800-JUNK um, to came out and give him an estimate, and they gave him an estimate. He said, okay, thank you very much, and they said they could do the job right now if they agreed on it. Now, the job was huge, like $8,000, right? And Orson, Carson never, never, okay? Carson never was going to hire them. He just called them for an estimate. But they came out with this tablet. They came out with this tablet, and they're walking around with this electronic tablet, and they're writing stuff down, you know, on the computer, you know, the little iPad and stuff. And then... um They were very professional, he said, but they gave him an estimate. And here's what was really weird. They didn't follow up after they gave him the estimate. So that was kind of weird. But to be honest with you, they're expensive. And I think they fall to a lot of people like the junk guys because we, we don't have as much bills as uh, another person does. You know what I mean? Um, so Orson finally chimes in. She said she had about 10,000 knickknacks everywhere and I didn't want us to knock him down. Dude, this lady was a she was so kind. The house was really badass. Tons of cool stuff. Yeah, it was. You know, Orson, I'll be honest with you. When we go in the house, Orson's amazed by the fucking pictures on the wall. Put it that way, okay? Indio the Holler. How many pianos have you moved yourself? Is there a technique? <laughs> Indio. Indio, my boy, asking a crazy question. He asked me, how many pianos have you moved by yourself? Is there a technique? Okay, I have moved two by myself. Uh, I just moved one recently, which was an organ, so they're a lot lighter. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to ask this to Orson, okay? I'm going to ask this to Orson. Orson, on the chat right now, I want you to tell it. do you think you can remove a piano by yourself? One of the pianos that we did yesterday, do you think you can do it by yourself without hitting any walls or anything of the lady's house? Okay, so I'm going to ask that question to Orson right now. So Orson has, he was telling me yesterday, Oh, let me do it by myself. And I was like, no, I'm not going to let you do it by yourself. Are you crazy? Um, okay, so I removed two by myself one time. Um, 
was the baddest decision ever. One was in the garage. What, I'm sorry. They were both in the garage. None of them were in the house. I, I refused to do by myself. I, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. They were both in the garage and they were both uh, the big uprights. They were big uprights. They were huge uprights. And I broke them down. Then I tried to move them out and just getting them in the back of the truck. I had to ask some guys, Mexican guys that were cutting grass, if they could help me load it into my truck, bro. That's how bad it was. It was so effing heavy, dude. It was so bad. Uh, I highly do not recommend removing pianos by yourself. Highly. Listen, I saw some dude's post the other day and he had an upright piano in the back of his truck. Who saw that post? Did anybody see that post? And this guy said, I went down a flight of stairs by myself and loaded to my Ford F-150. Bull crap. He's lying like a dog. No way he could have done that. There's no way. Unless this dude's a power lifter and he's like, and I saw him. I saw a picture of him. This dude's like 5'8", 170 soaking wet, 180 soaking wet, whatever, bad. There's no way he could have done it, dude. That's it. That's just no way he could have done it. And... There's not a technique to do it by yourself. I will tell you that the way I did it that day was very, very hard. Uh, but I got it into my truck and I struggled and I said, I'll never do this again. So I asked Orson to help me out all the time. Now, Orson, didn't, you didn't put a comment down there, bro. If you think you could do it by yourself. I'm waiting for you to comment, bro. Cause I got to go to work now. Mm. All right. So there are... You need two people. You need two people to move a piano. And there is a technique. I average about maybe. Okay, so let, let me just tell you. The most pianos I've done in a day is three. I do about four to five pianos a week. On a slow week, I'll do two. On a, on a normal busy week, four to five. Let's just say one a day. Okay, sometimes I'll knock out two. And then the rest of the week, I won't have any until Friday. I have three, right? So that's five. So let's say I do about realistic four pianos on a busy week. <sighs> Slow week, one or two. One or two. Has there been weeks that I don't do any? Yeah, but I do I do, do a lot of pianos. Hot tubs is a different story. So I average about maybe four to five hot tubs, hot tubs a week. I haven't had one. I didn't do one yesterday. Uh, I did one Saturday. I, I did last week. I did three in one day, two in another, the next day. I mean, we were just busy as fuck. Well, that was the week before that, yeah, last week. So it, it just depends. Sometimes they come in waves and sometimes they don't. So this piano, I have a piano that I'm doing tomorrow, by the way. Uh, so that's a good question to ask. Anyway, so tonight, Tuesday nights is our webinar mastermind class okay it's a free class we have about 27 to 30 people that join this class every week uh i tried moving a water heater filled with crap inside couldn't do it left it yeah you have to leave it out you are small bro i could have done it bro i could have done it bro i could have done it. oh some of these questions got here they got stuck they got stuck bro Okay, in all seriousness, even if you could do it by yourself, it's not worth it. Just get a helper. Those things are way too damn heavy and big. Okay, Junk Pro Cross says, I call my first dolly. I call my f I, I call my flat dolly my Cadillac. <laughs> Matt, a two-man job for show. For show, Matt, what's up? Solo dolly, I got footage 15 minutes. Man, this Junk Pro Cross, stop lying, bro. This bitch was like a little baby. I swear. I swear, Junk Pro Squad, I swear, I want to see it. You put the link in this video. I want to see it. You call me out right. But I swear to God, you moved a little baby one. I swear it was a baby one, okay? So you disagree on this, but I'm going to tell you, I disagree with you, bro. I agree to disagree. I want to see the footage. Talk to Smock. You got to mock the mock. I do do. He's <laughs> Matt says I do do. Uh, I tried moving in water here, field. Okay. Hey, Junk Guys, what's your best? form of paid advertising. So I don't pay for advertising, but I think my best, if I was paid, would be Craigslist. I would easily pay for Craigslist. Yeah. What's that at? It's a party in here with 30 people. Oh, shit. I didn't even know it's party. Now Carson's in here. It's time to party. Hey, hey, motherfucker. Hey, 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 motherfucker. Hey, hey. So here's a rumor. You want to hear a rumor? 
Let me throw this out there. Oh, so by the way, tonight uh, I will be opening uh, and showing our mastermind webinar group, okay? Our new website and what's most important is the eviction process page. It's a dude. I'm telling you, almost took me a week and a half to do this page, and I took some time doing it. And it's 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 such a good page. You're gonna love it. And I want everybody to look at it. And I'm gonna get clicks by y'all, but I'm gonna put it on Facebook. I'm gonna put it on Instagram. You, you're gonna all be going what? You're gonna love this page. You're gonna love this page, and I want everybody to copy this page because this is gonna be a great page. But for me. I'm going to dominate evictions. I just am. I just am in this area. I already do a lot of them, but I want to be the numero uno in evictions in this area. And the page that I built kind of proves it, kind of proves it, man. <sighs> okay. So Dana B Beatty, uh, what do you do look for in a man? What do I look for in a man? Okay. Well, that's easy. You got to have a big dick. Um, you got to pay for my bills and stuff. Wait, wait, I'm a dude. What the fuck? My bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, anyway, yeah, what kind of question is that, man? Anyway, to, so tonight, stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. Uh, and you're going you're gonna to absolutely love the, the video talk tonight, the Mastermind webinar class. It's going to be awesome, dude. I'm telling you, it's going to be totally, totally awesome. You know, what do you think, I'm P. Diddy or something? What is that? You know what I mean? Uh, put me in the group, bro. Well, you got to send me your email and you got to email it to me. Don't put it in this thing. You got to email it to me at junkguysdfw at gmail. Indio the Holler, is there a way to send me any ideas on a Craigslist ad? Yeah, there is, bro, but I'm working right now. You're going to have to hit me up before the meeting. You know what I mean? Oh, someone wrote something stupid. Let me see the message. Let me see. Who wrote something stupid? You're, 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 you're stupid. Oh, I'm going to show that. Indio called me stupid. I don't know how to show it. Another moderator like that. Love the short king. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, that's going to do it for me right now. 31 minutes. Going to my first job. It's uh, two. I have two dumpster enclosures, okay? And then I have a uh, two house jobs that I got to go to. One starts at 12, and I'm late to that one already. I will see you later, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you tonight at... The Mastermind Group Webinar. I will see you. Have a great one, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.